Hello, Jess Too Good here. Today we're taking a look at LEGO Minifigure Series 17. This release is May 2017, and this is going to be the complete series, including the mystery minifigure back there. So without further ado, let's get into this. All right, so let's start out with the Surfer because that is listed as number one on the pamphlet. The arms are very, I guess, specific. I don't really like them, but at least they have a new design. Um, and the colors, of course, are new. But the reason I don't really like this figure is because this is a third Surfer in the LEGO Minifigure line, and it doesn't really bring much new to the table. There's not a new hair color, and the surfboard piece, it's kind of cool that it has a shark design, but it's not anything too interesting. I really wish the hair was maybe like black, and then I would have liked this a little bit more because that's the same hair that Luke Skywalker has in a lot of other sets. So number two on the pamphlet is the Circus Strongman, and this is my other like least favorite figure. Trust me, it gets better from here. Um, this one is kind of based off of the classic, I guess, early 20th century stereotypical circus guy and we already got a weightlifter in series two and I think that one's more interesting because it's more modern. Uh, the design of this I was actually surprised to see that this is just one piece those aren't like two balls that you would take apart um, and everything itself there's just nothing too interesting here for me and here's a look at the face print underneath. So here is one I actually really like the third minifigure listed is the pastry chef. This design is adorable just too adorable as that famous video says. Not really a famous video, but check it out. And the design of the pie has some strawberries on it. That's a new print. The design of the whisk, that's a totally new mold. And the hair hat combo is something totally useful with the hair kind of popping out of the chef's hat. We haven't gotten a chef design in LEGO minifigure series before. The torso is great. The legs even have part of the torso design on it. It's all about that. And they even go above and beyond by providing an alternate face on the back. They didn't even need to do that. And she's kind of smirking right there which looks just too cute. So overall, this is definitely one of my favorites, if not my favorite. And fourth is the Corn on the Cob guy, which is a fan favorite, but I really don't like this one because they don't have a Lego Corn on the Cob piece. And that's really all this figure got going for it because there's no printing underneath this Corn on the Cob suit, which you can kind of slide off like this. And you can see it's just blank. Only thing I like is his face um, because it's kind of a funny face. It has a very, I guess, hilarious design with that big bushy mustache. It also has a very sincere look, but other than that, yeah, not really a fan of this Corn the Cob guy. I do like the textures, at least, with the design. Hopefully, we'll get a Lego Corn the Cob piece sometime soon, but that is it for the Corn the Cob guy. Here is the veterinarian, and she has a new rabbit mold, which I'll take a closer look at in a second. But for the design of the figure itself, I really like this one because getting, you know, medical-type designs with the scrubs and everything is quite hard in Lego these days. So you get that uh, even down to the little legs, which have a name tag on it, but it's a blank name tag that doesn't have a specific name to it, so I like that doesn't really make this an exclusive type of design just for this one figure. You could even use it for a man, male nurse, uh, maybe not the actual torso itself. Now the face print is pretty sincere, which I like, but uh, my favorite part of the whole figure is actually the hair piece, which is a totally new hair piece. So you got a strong design for the actual character itself. You have a nice new animal piece and you have an awesome new hair piece. So this one is definitely one of my favorites. But let's take a look at that rabbit. And the rabbit itself, has just a cute little face up there, has one ear kind of tilted to the side, and even has a little tail. I think that's so cute. It could actually attach to two studs as well. So here is a hot dog man, and this isn't a hot dog suit guy, but an actual hot dog server. This is actually the third waiter of the Lego minifigure line, but what they've done here is really giving it this totally fresh new take, and that's something that I like, that I can't say about the server. Now the actual tray itself is a new molding, which has a dark blue design. You could also use that as a shield, which I think White Fang pointed out in his review. And so people will get creative with that. Also, this hot dog bun right here is a very, I guess, a highly sought after piece. So to get it in this cheap minifigure series is really good. As well as a hot dog wiener right here. This is a new color for it. So that's some exclusivity right there. And then the milkshake piece is totally new in this color because we've really only gotten it with, I think, printing before in the Simpsons line. So getting it as a plain white design is super useful. Now the design for his torso has some pretty cool kind of a, I guess, printing with the apron right there, a little happy face and a bow tie. I'm glad they don't have a name tag on there because that would really ruin it. Or I guess there's a name tag right there, but it doesn't say the name of the waiter or anything. When they do that on these waiter minifigures, I know they did that on like the ice cream set from uh, the Lego movie series, or sorry, Lego movie line. It really ruins, I guess, the usability of it. And then you got this chipper face right here and this hat up top with a nice red line. So overall, definitely just a fantastic minifigure and probably my favorite of the series. So here's the butterfly girl, and this is one of my favorites from the series. 
I like the back butterfly wing design, which is this nice translucent kind of a molding, and you have some printing on there as well, and that just kind of attaches at the neck. No back torso printing, uh, but you do have some front torso printing with this little kind of tank top with a cute little butterfly design. Also, the flowers right here actually use, I believe, a new color for this, where it's a lime green instead of just a regular green. So I like that. Um, and then her hair piece right here has a nice printing on it uh, with the two flowers, which make it a little bit more exclusive. Her legs also have some printing on there as well. And the design for her face is pretty cute. The only thing I wouldn't like or I don't like about it is this flower right here. I wish they wouldn't have done that because getting little girl faces is kind of rare. And I like using little girl faces because those don't have lipstick on them. I like making girls without lipstick because not every girl wears lipstick. So here's a gladiator and this one, it just feels kind of redundant. We got a lot of these warriors and gladiators and stuff like that. And this one doesn't really bring anything too new to the table. There's some little parts I kind of like, like the shoulder pad printing right there, uh, which is dual molded as well. And the face prints all right, even though we got a lot of bearded men. Um, but my favorite part of him and the part that I really like about him is his hair piece because getting the thin hair in a dark mount color is extremely useful. I hope they release that hair piece in different colors. Uh, but as it stands, this one's definitely one of my least favorites. Here is a connoisseur. Now, I would really not like this minifigure if it wasn't for the animal inclusion, which is this doggy right here. This is a bulldog, and the printing and everything is so cute, and the actual molding itself is exclusive. I love getting new animals, even if it's a new breed for a dog in Lego form, so I really do appreciate this one. It could also attach to two studs. But looking back to the minifigure himself, uh, he's kind of like a worse version of the mod from Series 2. I guess just a less fun version. Uh, but I do like the side arm printing with the stripes, um, even though we've gotten a few printings like that before. And I guess the baguette's okay because it's not in that traditional tan color, but I believe we have gotten it in this color before. Either way, the bulldog really makes us a pretty good minifigure. So here's the Battle Dwarf, and this is sort of like the hot dog waiter where they made such an improvement over the last one that I actually really like how this came out and it stands on its own. Um, this guy is, you know, the second dwarf in the LEGO minifigures line because the last one we got was Series 5, but this one has such cool detailing. I love the printing on this kind of iron mallet right there, uh, which is nice to get the hammer piece in that coloring. Uh, there's even like a little tattoo right there, some printing on the back. I like this side. I wish the other side didn't have the tattoo because just using this would be super useful with just that kind of gray band right there. And and the dark red kind of hair really puts it over the edge and I like that uh, because you got this dark red kind of mohawk, some dark red kind of mustache printing and even a beard. Now the really cool part that I didn't expect that made me like this minifigure is this bottom part right here which is dual molded small legs. I haven't done that for a while and it's cool to get another version of that. Um, so that's going to be pretty useful with that orange stripe on the bottom. I hope they do that with more minifigures. I know the Fun at the Beach set has a few of those. So that is it for the Battle Dwarf, now on to the next figure. So here is the Retro Space Hero, and this is kind of based off of those, I guess, early to mid 20th century uh, futuristic space serials or character designs. I really like how that came out because you got this nice kind of clash of olive and gray, and it's something that doesn't look like previous LEGO astronauts because I like how LEGO keeps continuing that lore of LEGO space, but this one kind of brings a fresh take on the table and I think that makes him really unique. I like the new molded kind of blaster right here, which actually fits a plume piece if you want to put it there. Also the helmet, which looks almost like a Spartan helmet or a Roman helmet, um, kind of gives that nice uh, design. And actually it's a dual molded helmet. And his face print underneath is a generic face, but it's unique enough to make it stand out. Uh, there's some side arm printing and leg printing, which both of those are also dual molded. And overall, this is just a very impressive figure. There's no back torso printing, but the cape kind of covers that. Here is the Yuppie, and this is one of my favorites because it kind of harkens back to Paradisa. You have that nice kind of Miami Vice, uh, chill, uh, pink torso under there, where you got this very rich lifestyle kind of captured in here. I don't know, I really like this. The old phone design is so cool as well on how they used uh, the walkie-talkie mold, but then they used these two new printed pieces, which is a one by one tile and a one by one cheese slope, to capture that classic brick phone design. Only part I don't like about him is his hair because yeah, that's a good hair piece to get in the Lego minifigure series for cheap, but I wish it was a new color because we've gotten it in black so many times before. A really cool impressive part is the side of kind of uh, arm printing where you have these nice kind of rolled up white sleeves, which those will be so useful. So overall, I'm really in love with this figure. 
Here is the Rocket Suit Kid. This is actually the third costume guy of the series, and to hear that next series that's non-licensed will be all costume suits, kind of gets repetitive. This one's okay. I like how it does explore that classic space design, like I kind of mentioned with that retro astronaut, which didn't, because now you have this little flag right here with a little crayon drawn logo. I kind of like that. And the coolest part for me underneath is this classic space logo on a plain gray torso. That's going to be useful to maybe make a gray classic spaceman. I don't know. I want to see how people um, kind of customize that or, or make custom minifigures with that. The actual design for this rocket piece is actually kind of cool and it's molding. It just kind of slips over the minifigure. You can see how it connects inside there. And overall, I mean, you can kind of make this maybe a part of display. I'd say it's a lot more usable than, say, the corn on the cob suit. So that's it for this minifigure. So here's the Exercise Girl. This is like the third in this line of just Exercise Girls. There was a pop star in Series 2, which was something that looked a lot like the Series 5 Exercise Girl. It looks like they're the same person. And then this one looks like the Series 5 Exercise Girl. So uh, it's just a line of redundancy. And this doesn't really feel fresh or original. The only part I like is the water bottle, which has that printed H2O logo up there. And I guess it is kind of cool how they used one of those stamp pieces in white. But the rest of the figure just seems kind of repetitive. Uh, you do get some decent dual molded arms with a little wristband printing, some decent dual molded legs with some kind of zebra pants and blue boots, which look totally ridiculous. I don't think I would use them. And this hair piece, which I love getting new hair pieces. This one's just so poofy, it's unusable. You'd probably use it for a witch or something. I don't know. But in general, it's just this pretty detailed but messy hair piece in this orange color. I don't really like it. Um, so that's really the design of this minifigure and this is definitely one of my least favorites. So here's the elf princess, this third elf in the Lego minifigures line. And this one, the one that thing that saves it for me, that makes me not totally not like this minifigure, I think it's okay, is the coloring. I like that aqua blue and I kind of like how the torso and, and, and dress right here have this nice shine to it. That's really cool. Same goes for this little shield right here. So that's going to be really useful for historical settings. Her sword is nothing new with the golden design, um, but her hairpiece is a totally new molding, and it's okay. I mean, it's it's decent. Um, it even has a little bit of an emblem on there, so I really think this one's just a pretty decent uh, figure. If you want to get a fuller look at her face, you can see she even has some cheekbones, which a lot of elves in general do in Lego form. One little detail you may not have noticed is that the sleeves actually have a printing as well, which I wonder what that's all about. But yeah, that is it for this elf princess. And now let's go on to the final minifigure. So the final minifigure is the mystery minifigure, which is the highwayman. Still don't know why they chose this specific figure. Who is isn't so interesting as the whole mystery minifigure of the line, but he's pretty good. He has some nice kind of a uh, side arm printing, which I like with the little buckles right there. That would be useful for maybe a suit and tie in modern times, but it could also be used in this classical setting. You got some nice dual molded legs with uh, a little bit of a torso kind of continuation on there. That would be good if you brazo it because now you'll have brown pants or sorry black pants with brown boots uh the two pistols are pretty cool with the flat iron coloring and uh the design of the face underneath which i'll take off all the stuff is pretty neat as well but before i take all that stuff off i want to say that the cape might be my favorite part of the whole figure because i think this cape design is really cool with the two kind of parts up front and it, it kind of continues that traditional regular skies cape on the back but those two parts up front are pretty usable in different settings and if you take all that stuff off, you can get a better look at his torso and leg designs, as well as his face, which kind of looks angry. So here is the packaging design for this series. And I wish they would do more colors. I mean, have they done a purple series yet? I totally forget. There's so much. This one looks exactly like the coloring for series five, which is kind of lame in my opinion. Either way, they do kind of tease that mystery minifigure up front with a little mystery mark over that. And for the pamphlet itself, they don't even show the Highwayman on there as well. And the back actually has a teaser for the Ninjago series, which you can see up here. I thought, at first I thought it was the Highwayman stealing the corn thing, but he doesn't have black arms. So I think that's just kind of a tease for the next series. So he says, who stole my corn? Lego.com dash minifigures. I think overall this series, at least my opinion on it, is very mixed. I mean, I like some parts of it and some other parts I really don't like. In that case, I guess it's a little bit like Series 16, which I got to really formulate my thoughts on that as well, because that was another series where I kind of had a mixed opinion on. The design of some of them are great, and I'll name my top five. So tied for number one is the Hot Dog Waiter and uh, the Gourmet Chef, 
wherever she is right there. Number three would be the yuppie back here. And number four would be the veterinarian. Number five would be the butterfly girl, which is right there. Those I really love. And the rest, some of them are pretty good. And then other ones are just flat out bad. Like I really don't like the very uninventive surfer guy. I think that's one of the worst in a while. The circus strongman is also very weak. The Crown the Cobb guy, I know a lot of you guys like him, but in general, I really don't like him for the reasons I stated earlier. So that's really my thoughts on this series. Um, next series, I think, is the Ninjago series, so that's going to be really interesting in general. And I will see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.